Okay, so I'm going to do this video to help you see what we do on titrations. Um, today we've talked about titrating 25 mils of 10th molar ammonia with 10th molar hydrochloric acid. The first point we talked about was when no titrant was added and all we had in the beaker was the ammonia. This is when volume of HCl added is zero milliliters, correct? We haven't added any acid yet. All I've got is that. Everything we did on that is fine. You've got this equilibrium, ammonia plus water. Let the acid donate the proton. This is a base, a weak base. This is the acid. And so what we have is the ammonium ion, and that generates some hydroxide, okay? Hydroxide ion. So that's what's going on in that beaker, okay? That's point one. So whatever we value we got for point one, that is correct. Now, point two is a little bit different. Point two, we added 10 milliliters of 10th molar, oh actually five milliliters. It's fine for our second point. So five milliliters of 10th molar hydrochloric acid was added to the 25 milliliters of 10th molar ammonia. And the first thing we have to do is let it react. Let the HCl react, neutralize some of the ammonia. Now, this is the kicker. Okay, so when we do that, HCl plus ammonia is not an equilibrium. And it is going to make, let the acid donate the proton, we are going to make the ammonium ion and the chloride. Which one of these ions from the salt, remember this is the salt that we make when we neutralize an acid with a base, we make a salt. Okay, so which of these ions is common to our ammonia equilibrium? Well, if we go back a page, we see, oh gosh, ammonium ion is coming from the weak base dissociation, but now I've made a salt, and this is going to have a greater concentration. So remember equilibrium, what happens when you add a common ion? If, I have an, if this is going on, and now I've made a salt, it's going to make the weak base dissociate less. So it is gonna change things for us. And so when we have the common ion, now we are gonna have, uh, so the salt has a, com a common ion with the weak base dissociation. common ion. It's called the common ion effect. Common ion effect. What makes it nice is in this particular example when we have a weak base and it's salt that has a common ion, the salt had this ion, the weak base association was producing that ion. It makes the weak base dissociate less and we make what is called a buffer. So it creates a buffer. So anytime we have in our beaker, we have the ammonia left over, sure, but the weak acid, uh, sorry, the acid, the strong acid and base reacted and created a salt. So we also have the salt. Now it's going to dissociate 100%, but I'm just writing the salt so that you see the connection. 
So anytime you have a weak base in solution, in solution, with its salt, we'll just say its salt, its meaning there's an ion in common, with its salt, notice the salt contains the conjugate acid of that weak base. So when I say it's salt, I mean it contains the conjugate acid of the weak base. That's what I mean when I say with it's salt. The salt contains the conjugate acid of the weak base. Anytime you have NH4, so now that I've said that, let's separate these. The salt is 100% soluble, so we're gonna get that in solution. So we have the weak base and its conjugate acid in the same pot. And of course we still have the chloride, but that chloride uh, is not involved in that equilibrium. That's one thing. The other thing is it's the conjugate of a strong acid and so it doesn't react with water. Uh, so it's a spectator. So the big things are anytime you have a weak base and its conjugate acid in solution, we have what is called a buffer. And we have a equation that will calculate the pH for buffers that makes those calculations so easy, so easy. And so POH, because it's a base, equals PKB, because we're dealing with a weak base dissociation, plus the log of the salt concentration, okay? So this will be the conjugate acid, that'll be the ion, over uh, the weak base, concentration of the weak base. And so we don't have to go into our ice tables anymore, which makes it nice. Buffers are, have this handy dandy formula for us. So if we think about it, the pOH then of that second point we had was gonna be, what does P mean? Negative log of the 1.8 times 10 to the minus five plus the log of these concentrations. So I just have to now find what is the concentration of the conjugate acid from the salt. Remember, this is gonna be from the salt that we made. So once you let the acid base react, you do have to keep up with the amount of salt made. And then we need our weak base. So if we look at letting, uh, I think our second point was five milliliters of 10th molar HCl, and that gives us, uh, well, we won't do that. Let's, let's just do it the way the grader would like to see us do it. So the moles of HCl then are gonna be five times 10th molar, which is 0 0.50 millimoles of acid. And then the moles of the base in H3 Remember, we had 25 milliliters of 10th molar, and so that gives us 2.50 millimoles of a base, and this was millimoles of the acid. So what's limiting? Which reactant is limiting? Remember, our reaction is HCl plus ammonia. This is not an equilibrium. This is a chemical uh, reaction between an acid base and so neutralization makes, let the acid donate the proton. We make, oh, there you see it. We made the conjugate acid of our weak base plus the chloride ion. So this is the salt. This is the salt that I'm referring to back here. 
That's the salt I'm referring to. It came from the acid-base neutralization reaction. So you have limiting, you have this to start with, 0.50, you have 2.50. You haven't made any of this yet, but you are going to make some because all of this is going to react. It's in a one-to-one -one mole ratio, so that much is consumed, and that's in a one-to-one, -one, so we make that much of the ammonium ion. We also make that much of the chloride ion, but the chloride ion is not involved in my equilibrium, and so it's not going to affect the pH. Okay, so we don't have any excess acid. We have, what is this, 2.0 millimoles of the base, and we have this, that's a lot of millimoles of the salt. So we can't neglect that. Here we go. So now getting our new concentrations, our new volume, we took five and 25. So the volume total now, after we add the acid and base, is five plus the 25, which makes 30 milliliters. And so going on to figuring that out, we have uh, concentration of the NH4 plus from the salt is, what did we say we made? 0 0.5. 0.50 millimoles of that in 30 milliliters of solution. And that will give us a molarity. And then the concentration of the base, the new concentration after the neutralization is going to be the 1.50 millimoles. Or was it two? I think it was two, wasn't it? Yeah, it was two. Two millimoles. Two millimoles of what? the base over 30 mils of solution. And so those are the concentrations we're gonna to need to go into our henderson hasselbach buffer equation. So 0.5 divided by 30 is 0.0167 molar. And for this one, two over 30 is 0.06, Six, seven molar. So now if we do the POH from Henderson Hasselbach, and that's on your equation sheet, you don't have to memorize it, equals the PKB plus the log of the conjugate, which in this case is the ammonium ion, over the base. All right, and there we have it. So POH equals negative log of the KB, which is, that's what little p means, is negative log. Remember, little p means negative log. 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5 plus the log. I need the salt concentration, which is 0 0.0167 divided by the ammonia concentration, which is 0 0.0667. And there I'm good. So now I just plug those numbers in and I have the POH. I don't need any anything after I let the acid react with the base and get the, the leftovers, the millimoles of what I formed and what was used up. I'm good to go straight to this formula. So negative log of 1.8 times 10 to the negative five is 4.74 plus the log 4.745 if you want three sigfigs. We only have two sigfigs. And then we have the log of the quotient. We have the log of that quotient. So we need the log of 0.0167 divided by 0.0667. And that gives me, the log of that is negative 0.601, if I did my math right. Six, seven, seven, oh, six, six, seven. And yes, I get a number less than one, and so that would be a negative answer. Okay.
And so if I say that minus this, then the pOH is... Four point one four four. Four point one four four. And the pH then is fourteen minus that. pH equals fourteen minus four point one four four. And so what do I get when I do that? Nine point eight five six. 9.856 and that is what we want to be able to do so tomorrow we'll go over that again just so that you see it so when is this going to happen when i add the acid and the base and the base is a weak base i'm going to create a salt that contains its conjugate acid and then i know i have a buffer and i come here period end of sentence so initial point with no acid, you don't have this. You just have the KB. You're done. As soon as you start adding acid, as long as you have the weak base and the salt together, you've got a buffer. At the equivalence point, you don't have any more weak base. You don't have any strong acid. You just have the salt. That's a different calculation. We're, we're going to put that off for a while. Then once you get past the equivalence point, you have excess strong, and that's we calculated that today in class, so that's good.